Hello, everybody. Welcome to Nunu Waco Show. Today, my guest is Professor Lema Simbet. He is the William E. Mayer Chair Professor of Finance at the University of Maryland, College Park. And he has been appointed Executive Director of the African Economic Research Consortium, AERC, a Nairobi headquartered economic policy research institution serving Africa. Professor Lema Simbet, thank you so much for being available today to be on Nunu Wake Up. Thank you very much, Anunu, for a privilege for me to be here. Yes. And congratulations on your appointment. I know you have thank a you. Many times. big journey ahead of you. Okay. Yes. So before we get you know, into everything that you have done, I want to know what is your memory of Ethiopia? Well, I have quite a few memories, mm -hmm. but I'm going to mention maybe three that actually stand out for me. Mm -hmm. Uh, it used to be that we had national service for university students. Mm -hmm. I was at Haile Selassie First University. So when the national service year came up for me, I was selected to be one of the 14 students actually supervising parliamentary elections. Okay. And uh, 14 students because there were 14 provinces uh, in Ethiopia in those days. Oh, wow. So I was assigned to Sinama province. Mm -hmm. And the capital of the time was Awaza. So my job was actually to uh, train candidates, to organize campaign speeches. Mm -hmm. And I think by the time we were done, the outcome was very fulfilling because there were several who were very entrenched guys who used to be re-elected mm -hmm. all, over and over again who actually lost elections. How and was that experience for you? Yeah. And how were you able to communicate you know, with, with those tribes whose language you didn't speak? Well, it turns out that uh, the working language was Amharic. Mm -hmm. But when I organized, say, campaign speeches, mm -hmm. especially in the rural areas, I have translators. So, for instance, I went to Walaita, yeah. I went to Sinama, even went to as far down to Moyale, Kenya, Moyale Ethiopia, which is bordering Moyale, Kenya. Uh, wow. So, uh, it must have been really interesting. Very fascinating. That's why I singled out as my first <laughs> memory. And actually, it's one of the best experiences in my life, you know. Wow. Uh, and then I think the second is um, uh, at the university, there was a very robust student movement, Ethiopian student movement. What kind of movement? Yeah, so, so the, their main mantra was uh, land to the tiller. And very, every year uh, uh, the movement was very robust. Mm -hmm. and, and I went through those processes. And then, and then I remember, remember having uh, roommates who were very politically oriented. <laughs> Uh, some of whom, by the way, are written rooms. Wow. Yeah, one yeah. of whom actually ended up becoming... I mean, they used to be a part of Ethiopia <laughs> yeah, yeah, then, yeah. so... So one of them actually uh, is one of my close friends, my best man at the wedding, you know. And of course, in my, in my early childhood, uh -huh. um, I was enrolled in a Catholic school uh -huh. in a region called Kambata. And, and then once I graduated from that school, uh, there was no high school in that area, in the Hosaina area. Okay. So we had to migrate to places outside uh, that they, we call them Araija, you know. Mm -hmm. And I, so I, I went to Nazareth, Glauber's school. Anyway, those are, those are actually great memories and great days. Uh, and, and do you yeah. still yeah. kind of keep in touch with, yeah. you know, your childhood friends? Oh, yeah, yeah, I do. I, I, uh, get engaged with my childhood friends and also get engaged uh, in terms of providing resources to some of those uh, uh, places. Well, that's yeah. great. You know, that's, yeah. And, yeah. and it sounds like mm -hmm. actually your memories and, and your experiences yeah. of Ethiopia has, you know, been a great foundation to where you are today in life. True. And with, with that said, you know, you came to America doing some of the toughest time for a yeah. person of African and African descent. Yeah. So what is your experience of America? You know, so my first um, uh, place, my first, uh, I mean, the, the first time I came to the U.S., I went to UCLA mm -hmm. in Los Angeles. So I think my first shock was to go to a cafeteria where you saw some kind of self-selected apartheid system, you know? Mm -hmm like whites just sitting with whites and blacks sitting with black. And I, I didn't quite figure out why. It was not very comfortable for me. Right. But on the other hand, those were also exciting times for the civil rights movement. Mm -hmm. So there was, um, there was there were a lot of uh, very inspiring speakers like Angela Davis, mm -hmm. and a number of them that, that actually went uh, through campus. Mm -hmm. I think one thing that I really 
came away with that experience is how important it is that, that, that we should be greatly indebted to the civil rights movement yes. for where we are. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the African diaspora. Yeah. Yeah, so, and I think the, the younger generation may not appreciate that. Mm -hmm. So everything that you see, you know, the sense of freedom, being able to achieve what we're able to do, culminating mm -hmm. in, the, in the election of Obama, is really attributable to the civil rights. Absolutely, movement. and yeah. you know, yeah. like you said, you experienced yeah. firsthand or witnessed yeah. some of the movements and some of the amazing speeches that yeah. have brought change. That's right. Um, how has that affected you as an African? Because you just mentioned that we don't really give credit where credit is due, and, and we just kind of think that we're entitled to this opportunity that America affords us because of what the African Americans, you know, were able to accomplish and fight for, and and so we could have a black president today. Yeah, yeah. You know, so yeah. what are some of your? I, I think I think um, uh, in a small measure. Uh, really instilling you know, the idea of this movement and how important it has been for us all over the world, the African, African American diaspora. And, and, and also, uh, I'm very concerned that we don't have much, the communication level is very low. Right. And the, the, we need to create as many forums as possible for mutual understanding. Mm -hmm. And, and my sense is that um, you know, there's, a, there's been a lot of brainwashing mm -hmm. of Africans about Africa, mm -hmm. and then Africans about African Americans, and always negative. And, and, and as a result of that, there have been some barriers, but I think we have to overcome those barriers. And really, uh, I would like to see like, my vision really to have a greater mutual communication understanding of the African diaspora and okay. African American. Yeah. From a prof yeah. professor's perspective, yeah. you know, do you think African school institutions, educational institutions, should have an African American studies? So that way, we're not only learning about them before we come here, but we also have an understanding of what they went through, and we could build that relationship that you're talking about. I, I, I think uh, this is something that I've not thought about. It. I think it's a pretty clever idea, but I would like to see uh, Africans studying African studies before they come here. Nice. I also want African Americans to study Africa. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. So, so part of the problem is really information gap mm -hmm. and knowledge gap. Mm -hmm. And in part created by outside forces. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> okay. yes, yes, that's so true. Yeah. But you know, Professor, you have, yeah. you know, weathered all types of climate, w whether it's the winter, <laughs> you know, <laughs> living in places like Ohio, or the yeah. hottest of the summers living in yeah. Washington, D.C., yeah. you know, but how does that compare to <laughs> the journey that you have taken in your career path? Yeah, you see, I didn't. <laughs> quite see the analogy until you asked, you know, you just asked me this yeah. question. Uh, maybe um, this will probably begins with my high school days. And in high school, that was at Nazareth, mm -hmm. as, as, a, as a Galaudus school, uh, I was very much into physics. I liked the sciences, mm -hmm. and my aspiration was to actually become an engineer. And, uh, and, I've, and I've, things have actually worked out really well for me from elementary into high school. You know, almost invariably I'm, I'm doing really well. Okay. Many times, you know, talking class. Yeah. But then the Ethiopian leaving certificate exam was very tough, very <laughs> competitive, you know. <laughs> and, and, and of course I, I, I was able to pass, yes. but I was not at the very top. You know? <laughs> okay. So, so uh, when I went to campus to register, what I saw was this long line of students for this, for something. I didn't know what it was. Okay. They told me that uh, uh, more recently, a, you know, a uh, consortium of American universities mm -hmm. have established new school of business. And I don't know what business, but, but what I saw was <laughs> this line, which is yeah. kind of a kind of market signal for me. Mm -hmm. And I said, since I'm not the top, you know, <laughs> you know uh, why don't I just put that as my first choice, be in line, thinking that I'm not even getting there, okay? My and that, oh, in engineering, I put down my second. Mm -hmm. So that just got me into business, into an area which is totally uncharted. So it was yeah. <laughs> so, by accident, yeah, so, virtually, yeah. that you... <laughs> yeah, so, so I got in there. And, uh, so that was one zigzag, complete mm -hmm. zigzag, you mm -hmm. know? 
And, and then um, uh, I also felt by, when I got into business school, the students were very, very high quality, very, very competitive environment. Mm -hmm. But I just wanted to make sure that I was doing okay right. and then passed. And they even had what is known as Christmas graduation, mm -hmm. means that, uh, you know, students flunk. <laughs> 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 so I was, I, was, I, was, I was happy that I was not part of those Christmas graduates. Okay. But then what happened was that year, um, again, uh, somewhat accidental, I attended a, a graduation ceremony. Mm -hmm. You know, these the ceremonies are actually held in, at the palace, at the Grand Palace. Wow. The emperor actually grants, you know, awards, degrees. And I noticed that there was one individual who was getting an extraordinarily large applause. And, and, and who was that person? And, and then I, I tried to figure out, and eventually I found out that this guy was getting this medal, this gold medal. You know, this is, what the, was the, medal is the medal is actually given to you uh, for uh, high, uh, like extraordinary academic achievement, mm -hmm. but also extracurricular activities. Uh -huh. And, and then uh, I said, this is like four years since. I said, this is something I should get, <laughs> although I didn't have any evidence. <laughs> you just like, if he can do it, I can do it. <laughs> so, so, so everything that I did, okay, uh, for the next uh, three, uh, three to four years, including mm -hmm. national service, mm -hmm. uh, through ups and downs, was to get this. Oh my God. And eventually it happened. <laughs> oh my God, well, congratulations. <laughs> Um, and then in this country, mm -hmm. um, when I went to UCLA, uh, I got into management area. Mm -hmm. My major in Ethiopia was more tangible, you know, it was accounting and kind of small finance. Right. But so by the time I got done with management, uh, the MBA, I felt like uh, I didn't really have much of a tangible skill. And so, so that that kind of led me into uh, into finance, okay? okay, and but but then I was planning on going back to Ethiopia, and then things changed in Ethiopia, right? The government changed, mm -hmm. and so uh, so I had to come up with some mechanism to stay in this country, okay. And then again, with our with our, the definite goal of achieving, uh, you know, the idea of uh, getting a PhD, I got into the PhD program. It was totally unplanned. <laughs> you just like to challenge <laughs> yeah, yourself so, a lot. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. And, and, uh, and then things worked out for me, and I was hired uh, as an assistant professor at the University of Wisconsin mm -hmm. uh, in Madison. And uh, that was very, very nice year. But then, I was, then as an assistant professor, I was mm -hmm. kind of struggling. You know, things right. were not really working out that well. But eventually... Uh, just turn around. And that was the beginning of you know what has transpired up to date. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, you you have quite a resume yeah. leading up to this point, and you have transformed departments at institutions, um, you know, yeah. and propelled them to be internationally recognized. What are like some of the, your methods in in approach in doing so? I, I think this comes in part from kind of gaining deep satisfaction in uh, mentoring. Okay. Uh, obviously, the immediate goal of my profession is to make an impact through uh, generation of new knowledge and research. But I also felt that uh, you should become a positive externality mm -hmm. to others mm -hmm. and institutions. And uh, that was really the thing that led me uh, to come to University of Maryland. Mm -hmm. you know, I had, I was already a chair professor at the University of Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. I didn't really have to move to uh, Maryland. Mm -hmm. And also there were other institutions like UT Austin mm -hmm. uh, trying to get me there as well. So basically I, I picked the least strong of those three institutions, mm -hmm. simply buying into growth options, very like uncharted territory again. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I th so what I did, and it was not really uh, based on some kind of manual that somebody has given me. Right. But I became um, uh, appreciative of the fact that you need a critical mass of talent. Mm -hmm. And then you, then you start building around that. And then make sure that once this begins to develop, that, that, that you don't lose it to the marketplace. And so you have the resources uh, to back up. And also you know, generate a team spirit 
have a clear vision and create an environment where people work with each other and also general, and then have have a sense of people actually buying into your vision and basically you know that's and, and now um, uh, Maryland uh, is so strong that I would not even think about going to the other institutions. Absolutely. This is one of the top finance groups in the world now. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Well, Everybody, welcome back to Nunu Waco Show. I have Professor Zemma here with me, the newly appointed Executive Director of the e AERC. Um, before we went to commercial, we were talking about some of your methods on how you've been able to transform and propel, you know, departments and institutions like University of Maryland. And now that you are taking on a new position, something that is probably not you know you have expected so how are you going to apply these same methods to a different institution like the yeah. AERC yeah before I respond to that question mm -hmm. I just realized that this is also one of those uncharted territories yes mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, the opportunity to head the AERC the African Economic Research Consortium mm -hmm. came uh, to my attention when I was trying to get more directly involved with Africa, after years of policy outreach with, uh, through institutions like the World Bank, IMF, mm -hmm. and, and, and also through the ARC. Mm -hmm. And then this opportunity uh, came when I was thinking more passive involvement. Mm -hmm. And just the reverse <laughs> has occurred. <laughs> okay. So uh, going back to your question, yeah, yeah again, you know, the, this is, a, this is an institution that has achieved immense success already. Mm -hmm. It's really taking it to the next level of excellence. And uh, using you know, similar strategies mm -hmm. and, and making sure that there's a clear vision mm -hmm. for this to be a premier institution, globally integrated, which happens to be in Africa, okay? Mm -hmm. Yes, but, absolutely. Yeah, okay? Mm -hmm. and, yeah. And, and then also again, you know, cultivating a culture of excellence, no mediocrity, mm -hmm. And, 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 and then uh, being in the business of uh, advancing research mm -hmm. and training for, uh, for building capacity, Absolutely. for policy making of the highest order. Mm -hmm. uh, that's really my, my vision. Uh, you know, and, there's yeah, a, yeah. a lot of people mm -hmm. um, who might not know mm -hmm. that this institution actually yeah. exists. I see. And if you could just el elaborate a little bit on exactly what are some of the works yeah. that they do on, you know, focus, yeah. Focusing yeah, on so this is an economics institution mm -hmm. and, and it's, it's, it's not surprising that those who are outside economics may not know about this institution. Mm -hmm. But in the economics network is a very, very well, highly recognized institution mm -hmm. in Africa and also outside Africa. Uh, so what it is is that it came into existence uh, some 25 years ago uh, at the initiative of some global partners. Mm -hmm. Uh, including Canada and, and the U.S., to uh, build uh, and bring mm -hmm. rigor to policy making that's based on evidence and research. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then later on, they expanded into training programs as well these, and by, by creating mechanisms for institutions in Africa mm -hmm. to collaborate on the, the delivery of master's programs, mm -hmm. uh, doctoral programs, and again, the whole idea being to build capacity of economics departments mm -hmm. to conform to best practices and mm -hmm. best standards. And, and, and it's been um, um, an incredible uh, African success story. Mm -hmm. And one, one indicator is really the, the number of uh, individuals at high policy levels who have actually gone through through this program, okay. and I can actually think of like nine governors of central banks. Wow, <laughs> okay. oh, yeah, that's, that's including a, yeah, yeah, that's a high number. Yeah, 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 governor of uh, the central bank of Tanzania, governor of central bank of Kenya, mm -hmm. and formerly the uh, governor of uh, central bank of Nigeria, and so on. Mm -hmm. And and then also, if you look at the successive you know, chief economists mm -hmm. of the African Development Bank, which are vice president. They've actually gone through, uh, through this. So uh, it's, a, it's a network, you okay. know, it's a network. Uh, uh, Nairobi is just the headquarters, mm -hmm. but you see the activities of the ARC um, all over Africa. 
And um, so I'll be actually interacting not only with the staff in Nairobi, right. but I'll be interacting with a network of uh, researchers uh, and, and, and policy makers. And there are also resource people mm -hmm. who are drawn from, uh, from the globe okay. who actually uh, work with these institutions okay. uh, in terms of in terms of help, you know, helping build uh, capacity. Then, so, so, so one of my, my um, goals is to enhance the global integration of the African Economic Research Institution. Absolutely. Yeah. So, in, yeah. In yeah. with that goal, yeah. um, what else will you be doing to integrate institutions that are, you know, African-based that might not have um, board members that are, you know, of the global community, but want to be a part of the AERC or need an assistant from the AERC? So, so, so in terms of uh, linkages, mm -hmm. uh, there are strategies for linking with institutions in Africa, think tanks, mm -hmm. uh, policy institutions, and, and also there are uh, uh, forums mm -hmm. which are actually intended to bring together mm -hmm. policy makers uh, from around, uh, around Africa. So, so AERC is actually engaged in institution enhancement, not just its own, but also an enhancement of other institutions. Okay. And it does so also in the training program. You know, so the whole idea of bringing to, together a menu of universities mm -hmm. uh, to collaborate mm -hmm. on training and providing resources and also cr creating a forum. And so in the case of the PhD, you know, thesis uh, research right. uh, gets evaluated through the same peer review mechani mechanism that, that the ARC has actually put in, in, into place. But what, what I'm also saying is that ARC, it will be mutually beneficial for ARC to enhance linkages uh, with institutions outside Africa as well. Absolutely. So for instance, I've already begun you know, talking to uh, individuals at the National Bureau of Economic Research, wow. called MBER, yeah. which is uh, domiciled uh, in, in, in Cambridge, Cambridge, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. And even, even like last week, the, the, the University of Maryland the School of Public Policy yes. had actually an ARC luncheon yes. where, where they invited me you know, to talk about the ARC mm -hmm. and we talked about a menu, a variety of ways mm -hmm. where we can actually, that they can actually get engaged with, 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 uh, with the ARC. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, you, yeah. you are one of the world's, you know, imminent think tank leaders and you come from a finance background and you're taking over an economic research institution. So what expertise do you bring forth to the table that, you know, people don't expect from you? Okay, that's a very good and tough question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. I think this is the first time uh, some, with someone with finance background mm -hmm is invited to head up uh, uh, this institution, and I'm very privileged to do so. Mm -hmm. So it didn't really come out accidentally. Uh, the reason is that uh, early on, mm -hmm. as a result of the ARC, by the way, mm -hmm. I started uh, bringing paradigms in finance to bear upon issues of public policy through okay. policy outreach, okay. and also more recently, it also for, 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 for research, research as well. So, so basically, uh, over the last f 15 years or so, mm -hmm. through the ARC, as well as other institutions in Africa, I have actually been uh, sufficiently baptized. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, okay. Yeah. And, <laughs> uh, and, 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 and also, given my background mm -hmm. uh, in institution building, uh, my background in mentoring, uh, of students, mm -hmm. and that's one of the things that I'm really proud of. I have, I have doctoral students uh, all over this country, yes. actually, yes. who have actually turned out to be better than I'm actually. <laughs> 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 and that speaks volume of you <laughs> yeah, as so a professor, one, yeah. yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so, so the idea of uh, you know my efforts you know, with reference to you know, global integration, mm -hmm. um, and also. Um, the ARC hasn't had much engagement with the private sector. And I think that's important for us to bring, mm -hmm. to cultivate, mm -hmm. and to build a private sector agenda, mm -hmm. uh, 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 especially on issues relating to the interface yes. of private public policy. 
you know, issues of, say, financial regulation, mm -hmm. risk management, governance. Mm -hmm. So, in fact, my, my first, there's this thing called plenary conference, okay. uh, which is organized by the ARC. This is actually in connection with the biennial uh, research workshop, which is one of the signature things that the ARC does. Okay. It's going to be on financial inclusion and growth. And my plan is actually uh, to see that we have some kind of um, kind of um, a private group panel yeah. uh, towards the end of the day. Yeah. So, so, so those are the things that uh, yeah. Do you think yeah. that you know with with mm. the services that the mm. AERC offers with the you yeah. know programs of training etc. that you would actually start the institution actually is going to start changing the culture of you know, these leaders, African leaders, once you take over. Because you come from a background that offers something different than what they are accustomed to. No, I don't think there's going to be much change uh, mm -hmm. in terms of culture. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in many cases, really uh, enhancement mm -hmm. of the culture which has already begun building up. For instance, uh, you know, the whole culture of excellence, conforming to best practices, mm -hmm. global integration, private sector, Technology in integration. Mm -hmm. uh, these are all um, agenda items that I'll be engaged in, really to take it to the next level of excellence. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's great, and you know, I'm I'm glad you yeah. said that because you know, in 2013, yeah, the African Union is celebrating its 50th yeah. anniversary. So, what is your take on where Africa was 50 years ago, mm -hmm. and where Africa is today, economic-wise? Interesting question. By the way, if you go back and look at the post-independence days, mm. they were actually exciting times for Africa. <laughs> and it turns out that uh, most African countries, mm -hmm. in terms of economic performance, mm -hmm. were at par or ahead of all these Latin American and East Asian countries. What happened? And then, and then, uh, and then the 70s and 80s, uh, when these countries, these emerging countries, the Asian tigers, Latin America, mm -hmm. they're all moving f forward. And Africa was marching backwards. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah. So this is this is this is an era of uh, repression, okay. uh, conflicts, and heavy uh, government uh, involvement in the functioning of economic sector. Mm -hmm. And so uh, now uh, I'm going to move things kind of forward. Yes. As of today, uh, these are we are we have exciting times. And, uh, and we, we, all of a sudden, the, the Africa began uh, uh, experiencing what I regard as a like, growth renaissance mm -hmm. in the wake of the 21st century. And um, so pre-crisis, mm -hmm. uh, 2008 crisis, yes. the, the average uh, growth performance in terms of uh, real GDP growth mm -hmm. was over 6% for the sub-Saharan Africa. Okay. And of course, there is some you know, differences in terms of countries because people always think of Africa as like as one troubled exactly. <laughs> country it's where there's a continent yes. of you know, 55 countries yes. including our new, newest member, you know, South Sudan. Yeah. Um, so what is actually fascinating is that, is that um, the crisis had a negative impact on average. You know, the growth went down to 2.8% mm -hmm. and then it rebounded uh, subsequently to 5% through 2012 and actually expected to be in that same range 2013. And so, so what we're looking at is a growth pattern, which is almost of the same order as these Asian tigers. Mm. Okay? Now, of course, there are always issues of, you know, um, is this alleviating poverty? Right. And how is this growth shared? Right. And I think there's also a lot of indicators pointing to a reduction in, in, in poverty that's attributable right. to this as well. So, so, um, so I think that <laughs> the AU celebration is, is timely. Okay. But I have to tell you though, the, the, this, this growth uh, performance mm -hmm. uh, is not accidental and it's not just because of AU mm -hmm. or, or AU yeah. or ECA. Yeah. It's really a combination of factors, and yeah, there have been extensive mm -hmm. reforms of the economies, mm -hmm. extensive reforms of the financial sector, uh, empowerment of private initiative, initiative uh, large-scale privatization of the state-owned enterprises, 
and bringing uh, inflation under control, increased fiscal discipline, and a reduction, you know, and declining debt overhang, mm -hmm. um, and uh, institutions uh, which are in the business of building capacity for improved policy making. That's where ARC is. ARC mm -hmm. has been mm -hmm. uh, in the business mm -hmm. of building capacity to uh, generate more informed policy makers uh, because you need, you need also quality human capital Absolutely. And, and quality governance. Mm -hmm. So really a combination of these factors have actually led to, led to what we're observing now. And so it's not, it's not, it's not accidental. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm glad yeah. it's not accidental and I'm yeah. glad that you mm -hmm. have you know, explained it thoroughly. Yeah. But is it sustainable? Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a very good question, by the way. Again, you know, and you have been asking very good questions. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> I'm going to make sure I get everything yeah. out of it. <laughs> yeah, uh, when when yeah, you know, a few years ago, pre-crisis, mm -hmm. uh, I thought that this was not sustainable mm -hmm. because it, it 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 almost seemed like a miracle, you know. Right. And so what happened was a, lo a lot of these countries became very resilient mm -hmm. even to the the, the global crisis. Mm -hmm. Especially for low-income countries, not just this is not this is actually diverse right. growth. It's not just oil-producing uh, economies, mm -hmm. okay, or or just commodity producers. You know? So so it's, it's, just, it's actually all over, okay. So um, so I think that the the mix, this ingredient, fundamentals that I talked about, mm -hmm. uh, empowerment of private initiative, uh, fundamentals, uh, economic policies. Um, mm -hmm. And, and, and then and then market friendly you know mm -hmm. uh, uh, policies and 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 the and a greater involvement of the private sector and, and also by the way advancing technology mm -hmm. and increased integration of Africa in, in the globe those things are in place okay, okay? Um, so the issue of sustainability can't be threatened by some some outside forces mm -hmm. okay and I, I have in mind two what are they Europe <laughs> you know, you have, so, <laughs> so you have European crisis, okay? And um, I think that if we don't get uh, the European crisis sufficiently resolved, mm -hmm. it could have an adverse consequence uh, on Africa. I'm talking about again on average, and this because Europe is still a major, you know, trading right. partner. Mm -hmm. So this will be a direct impact. It could be also in the rest of China. China is, you know, this is a big player yeah. in Africa. So. Uh, and also the U.S. The U.S., you know, we are, we are having difficulty getting our fiscal house in order, yes. right? Yes, and, and And that, that has a negative, you know, potentially negative impact as well. Mm -hmm. So my hope is that um, uh, this Europe, U.S., mm -hmm. you know, this, this external, potentially external, like negative mm -hmm. uh, consequences are kind of global. And my, my sense is that there will be global partnership in dealing with this, which will be beneficial yeah. uh, to Africa. Yes, I, so, I so, so basically what I'm saying is that there are s s real and substantial risks and threats to right. what has been achieved so far, which means that we also need sufficient capacity mm -hmm. to manage risk, to manage it downward. That's one of the things that the ARC is going to play a role in because it will be engaged in the generation of policymakers mm -hmm. okay, uh, who have better capacity to deal with issues like that. Mm 